Welcome to the podcast of MotorWeek, television's original automotive magazine. MotorWeek is made possible by TireRack.com and by RockAuto.com. Here's your MotorWeek podcast host, John Davis. Thank you, Alec Webb. Welcome to MotorWeek podcast number 154 and Motor Week on Facebook Live, number one. Whoa. So uh, we're going to basically uh, have a chance to uh, do something a little bit different with our podcast today. Those of you watching us live on Facebook, you'll also have an opportunity to um, shoot us some questions because our topic today, and let me go around the table first. We have our road test producer, Ben Davis. (laughs) Hello, guys. Our assistant producer, Greg Carlos. That is me. We have our writer, Garrick. Sirkin. Zykin. Zykin. <laughs> You'd think, you know, that I'd get that right after Still now. the new guy, so it's okay. Uh, the new it's guy. True, true. And Patrick Lucas, who's sort of in charge of all this stuff that we call social I'll media. I'll take the blame for all of this. Yeah. Uh, Garrick, how many of these have you done, Garrick? Is this your second? Podcast? Yeah, this you, would be the second. This yes. is the second one. Yes. Uh, but uh, the reason Garrick is here today, besides the fact that we like him, is because, and he was also a warm body that was available, (laughs) uh, is the fact that we're going to be talking almost exclusively uh, today about the North American International Auto Show, uh, and uh, we'll basically go around the table, talk about everything we saw that we liked and didn't like, and uh, at the end of it, uh, we're going to touch on a couple of topics. Uh, we'll do. We'll go through the winners of the North American Car Truck and Sport Utility Vehicle of the Year awards. And I think because it broke today, the day that we're actually recording this, uh, we'll talk a little bit about Chrysler being accused of uh, cheating on diesels. So Busted. with that said, uh, let's get on to it. Uh, Garrick, you and I did most of the um, uh, previews, uh, and uh, Greg, you were basically working a lot with our videographer, Dave Hunter. Mm-hmm. Um, let me just start going around the table and say, what was the what vehicle were you – did you like the best of all the stuff that you saw at the show? Well, I think uh, of the two that got the most attention, the Toyota Camry was – the most well attended press conference that that I went to. You the, said two, so what was the, the other? The other one was the Volkswagen ID Buzz. Okay, there was there was a lot of interest. There was a lot, a lot of. of that. That. Might you say Buzz? Well, I, I figured someone else would, so I'm so going to hold off got on in that. There first. <laughs> um, <laughs> when <laughs> crash and burn, <laughs> I bet I was kind of a, and I still am a little worried about the uh, the Detroit show, but then you look at what was there, mm-hmm. and you had not only the best-selling car in America getting right. totally redone, mm-hmm. but you also had the best-selling uh, minivan, that being the uh, the Honda Odyssey, getting redone. Right. And we had uh, a bevy of products from German manufacturers. A lot of it felt like um, Frankfurt West. Uh, <laughs> the companies that kind of underwhelmed us were the domestics and frankly chrysler did very little and ford not too much and gm a little more so it was a really kind of weird vibe to the show you know actually hearing you say that and we've talked about it before Mm -hmm. how the camry the sales are not Mm -hmm. what they were well but they're still pretty they're still best-selling car right but that's the this uh, i'm now seeing that the auto show kind of represented the market now Mm -hmm. 10 years ago the camry and the new camry and pilot we would have really been talking about those. Oh yeah. But now the midsize sedan sales are are, are falling, uh, and the uh, I'm sorry, not the Pilot, but the um, Odyssey. Odyssey. I mean, when minivans were really big 10, 15 mm-hmm. years ago, I mean, this would have been huge. And now nobody really cares anymore because everybody's buying the utilities, the sports yeah, utilities, right. which it, is it, it says why, a lot. Right, which is <laughs> right. why I guess the North American Car of the Year now added that. Uh, utility, the sport yeah. utility index, and but we'll get to that in a minute. But yeah. Go ahead and continue, though. What what uh, struck your fancy at the show? Uh, my biggest thing was that Kia Stinger uh, that it had a lot of uh, talk, and sure. uh, I wasn't following the press conferences like you were. I was more um, behind the pack. You were actually working. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, behind the pack, but I just kept hearing about it all day. When I finally got to see it, I was impressed. Uh, it's a Nice looking vehicle. It's aggressive looking. It does. Crazy it looks aggressive. good. And then, did, did you like the bling on it? The hood scoops and the and the vents. I mean, that was the <laughs> only problem I had with it. But then again, it made you stand out. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's always weird when auto shows are. Um, you know, it's hard for me to see a car at an auto show and know what it's going to look like out mm-hmm. on the street where it's going it to be most different. of the time. Mm-hmm. So it didn't really bother me that much. Um, but yeah, I did hear a lot of people saying that they had something to. 
uh, gripe about it were those things. Joe, have a Facebook Live question? Yes, we have a question from oh, Facebook oh, Live. Oh, good. Uh, uh, back there. Mark wants to know, was there any news on the 2018 Mustang? I know you guys said there wasn't a lot of domestic um, stuff. but was There, there was nothing official uh, except that there's going to be a hybrid Mustang. That was the only really thing that Whoa. Ford said, and, and they didn't give a time frame on it. And there were no concepts or anything, right? From what? Mustangs? About Mustang. No, there was no real talk in the Mustang. There was no real concepts. The only thing that in the introduction for the F-150, um, there were comments made that there's going to be a, a hybrid F-150 and a hybrid uh, version of the Mustang. A lot of that is, of course, to meet the CAFE standards. And even if they get relaxed, they're not going away. And also, uh, the Mustang is sold around the world, and in a lot of other countries, that will actually play much better than it might actually play here. Okay, Benny. My turn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I really love the concept VW bus as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think it's awesome to see something like that, and I would love to see it hit the streets. Um, the Atlas R I thought was kind of cool, and I'm really excited to hear Volkswagen's uh, pushing so many electric vehicles down the road because I think they truly do the best job at it. Yeah, they're talking about a couple of dozen electric <coughs> vehicles, actually about 30 electric vehicles by 2025. I mean, they have used this opportunity of their v- of diesel debacle uh, to, to redo the company. Now, the, the Buzz, which looks like a micro bus, mm-hmm. it is uh, a second-generation concept that they had shown before when they were talking about EVs. But for some reason, I think because this one was just more finished off. Pretty and because <laughs> You know, pretty colors. Plus, they, they said it's going to be all-wheel drive, and it will have a 278-mile range, 40 miles more than a Bolt EV. Mm-hmm. That it got two engines. much more attention to what? Two engines. Two engines. Uh, it got a lot more um, play this time. Mm-hmm. But while we're talking about that, you mentioned – the Atlas, which is their new Passat-based crossover, which was mm-hmm. big. And then I think the, the surprise at the show was that they took the Tiguan, which has never done that well here because it's been so expensive, and they're going to do a long wheelbase U.S.-only version right. of it. They've added yep. 10 inches to the wheelbase and a third row in that. So they're going to have two three-row SUVs when a lot of manufacturers are still what? struggling to do one. Um, so. uh, one more ad. I'm pretty pumped about the uh, – Confirmation for the Bronco 2020. Yep, 2020. Yeah, 2019. Yeah. Go ahead, Patrick. Yeah, we've taken all your steam. Well, well, no, no, question. not at all. Yeah, let's go to the We one? did have a comment earlier one. about the Bronco. They wanted to know more info, but we got Bronco another one Ranger. now, which is kind of odd. I wanted to stick out. Aubrey wants to know any news on any kind of hybrid technology in the commercial realm, transit vans, that kind of thing. They They're didn't, one. there was really nothing there at that show, but that's not where that information is normally released. I can tell you that will, coming up in March, the middle of March, the, uh, there will be the, the big truck show, the work truck show, out in Indianapolis, and there's a, a day set aside for green truck information. That's where that information will likely come. Having said that, uh, Ford has made it clear that they want to do uh, primarily hybrids, but if not hybrids, hybrids and plug-in hybrids for their entire line. And since the powertrains between so many of the vehicles are similar – uh, if they do a hybrid F-150, I'm sure it will make its way into the uh, transit. Transit Connect, not so sure, but certainly into the t- bigger transit. I wonder if Eddie Bauer is going <laughs> to have yeah. a Bronco model or if that's a little sweet. too uh, too you, dated. You know, the, the, the new Bronco, first of all, we're the only one of the few countries in the world that hasn't had a Ranger in recent years. The Ranger overseas has is, is been all new. It's a mid-sized truck about like the Colorado. Now it's getting redone again. We're going to get that vehicle. And, you know, my guess is it'll be about Colorado size. It'll have a, an F-Series type front end on it. And then the question is, though, if they're building that in the same plant that they're going to build the Bronco, what will the Bronco look like? It can't be that long, mm-hmm. you know, so it's going to be shorter. Uh, how short can it be without messing up that assembly line? Uh, I'm wondering if we're not all going to be a little let down that this thing's going to look oh. bigger and a lot more Don't fancy than a lot of – I mean, a lot of people out there, all the pictures are showing the original, you right. know, compact Bronco, yeah, yeah, and yeah. this is not going to be it. Well, hopefully if it does end up being that, hopefully SVT will take it and make a Raptor-type kind of Bronco or something to just scratch the edge of people that really want to well, see what, something like that. The big headline in Detroit was, you know, look out Wrangler. 
So we'll see. That's yeah. awesome. So look That's out, awesome. Wrangler. Here comes some real yeah, competition. Yeah, so apparently they're planning on having the top come off, but I wonder if it's going to come off on all to. of them. Yeah. It'd be cool to have a hard top version with like kind of those big wraparound windows that the Bronco 2 had. Yeah. If you don't they want to deal with a top, you want it. they yeah. should kind of yeah, like right. the expert. As well as have a hard top. B. Davis. Uh, remove a hard top. <laughs> but I, I, I don't know about you, but there's no vehicle, future vehicle, I've been asked more about yeah. in the last two years than the Bronco. I, I have one friend who yeah. consistently asks me about it or claims that it's – he's been claiming it's been coming out for the last five years. It'll and sell I, it. It yeah, finally yeah. was announced, and I got to tell him <laughs> – I was like, it's finally happening. You were right just, right. just before everybody. 2.3 liter Yuka boost with a manual for me, please. That's probably, well, <laughs> yeah. I don't know about the manual. Patrick. Uh, you got right. another one. Uh, oh, Gus boy. wants to know. He you doesn't want to answer any questions. That's why <laughs> I've, got just, I've got something to This Facebook talk about, Live but, is oh, awesome. But okay, let's, okay. Let's hear, let's last one for a while. Thank you all for, uh, for letting us have your questions. Go ahead, yeah, Joe. Gus wants to know your guys' thoughts moving on to the Audi Q8 concept. I was literally just about oh. to talk about that. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> stand by, guys. You know, I'm going to say my comment let Patrick have it. Gus, you're right, blowing Audi, up let me explain here. what it is. Audi Q8, large concept uh, crossover vehicle mm-hmm. shown for the first time at Detroit, part of the German onslaught in the Motor City. Go, Patrick. All I was going to say about it was that it looks very interesting. It's still very much in concept form, but I'm just excited to see what they do with an interior because they're always Audis, uh-huh. as we have talked about. Probably one of the best interiors still, and that one had a pretty fun. They showed a lot of interior shots of that concept, and it looked very uh, futuristic, but still looked more production ready than a lot of concept interiors look. And they're but they're doing away with the control knob for the interface. The I IME, did not notice that. With they, what? What are they, they going to do? You know, there it's going to be all touchpad. Mm. If touch you look, like, do not like, like that. Lexus, like uh, touchpad, like Lexus, and touchscreen, touchpad and touchscreen. No. Mm. In, in my opinion, oh boy. that is a. I actually think they're taking a step back, but they're basically saying that everybody wants the same kind of interface yeah. they've got on their smartphone. So that Whoa. nice, compact that we like better than mm. anybody else's you know, knob with four buttons. Who's ever? Where are they getting they this info? They should talk to Acura. They finally brought back the volume knob on the stereos. As mm. did talk Honda. To I mean, let's, yeah. let's withhold judgment. That's not what people but, don't want. Don't before right. we get away, though, the Q8. They have Audi has a new designer. Mm-hmm. The, the grill is the new face of Audi, supposedly. Mm-hmm. I thought it was awful, no. but then that's just you know it's all a matter of taste. But it's it's so bold and br- in your face it's, that it's just. Well, it's, you, what's your opinion? It's I mean, funny because yeah, because the Q8 looks so radically different, and then alongside it were the new SQ5 and the new S5 Cabrio, and those yeah. looked like they did absolutely nothing to it at all. So. They're sort of playing this game where they're not going to change anything now. They're saving it all for this next. Oh, it's coming. Mm -hmm. It's coming, though. I think you're right. Uh, They kept saying to us over and over again, this isn't more than a concept. Well, uh, while we're on the subject of grills, though, um, a highly contested subject was the uh, new Lexus LS grill. (laughs) It's got a lot of talk. Um, Same basic shape, really. Same basic concept, but. Right. Different take. I, I mean, I, I don't know about was, you. I, I liked it. I hate the spindle grill. Mm. I, liked I liked it, it. on that car. For, right. Yeah, okay. I'm sure it's popping up on the screen right now, but for those just listening, it's, uh, again, it's the same basic shape, but it's a lot more intricate, a lot of uh, chrome in there, and, it'll, and it's basically like a cross-hatch design. It sort of looked like it almost wrapped into the bumper, yeah, too. I, I right. certainly yeah. would not have to clean it. Yeah, but who, which, how many Lexus owners are going to be out they, they there on their hands and knees you know, cleaning their it's Lexus? It's the old Detroit thing. Longer, lower, wider, gorgeous car. I just sure. thought it was New engine, car. twin turbo. It, it didn't look mm-hmm. far off from some of the F, the true F car trims mm-hmm. that I've seen, though, where that kind of mesh runs in through the bumper and stuff like that. It didn't seem like a far departure. Anyway. Well, it, it wasn't, but somehow, I don't know, maybe it was the length of the hood. It mm-hmm. just seemed to work. Yeah, I, I or maybe we got used honestly. To it. I think it was just the inlay because we're used. To, it's mainly a mesh inlay mm-hmm. normally, but now it's got this crazy, um, like dagger type crosshatch and, thing. And the mm-hmm. space between <clears throat> all of the areas is different right. as it flows back. Right. So it's right. almost like I looking see. at a picture in perspective. Mm-hmm. It's got a lot of dimension. But the, uh, uh, yeah. This is the same chassis uh, that the LC five, uh, the SC five hundred has, uh, and uh, it's you know you mentioned the twin turbo V six, all wheel and and uh, rear drive. A spectacular interior. I haven't thought that the LS lived up to its flagship status for years. This car 
I thought blew blew me away. Yeah. I just thought the, it was gorgeous. The interior is pretty uh, interesting looking. Yeah. Definitely more high tech than we've seen in, uh, than Lexus and Toyota really offered lately. Uh, interesting knobs up on the mm-hmm. like gauge hood uh, that uh, shades it. Um, yeah, I think the uh, the other big news is really a 10-speed automatic transmission. Yep. It seems like now at this auto show, eight is the bare minimum, basically, right. for yeah. transmissions mm-hmm. now. The Honda Odyssey's got to be available yeah. with the 10-speed. Eight, nine, and 10-speed transmissions. Mm-hmm. Before we get away from it, um, we started off with Garrick talking about the uh, Camry. And um, let's go back to it because okay. this car was the most was easily the edgiest most dynamic looking right. camry right. Uh, uh, they've ever shown they showed us two models uh, the se x and uh, or xse rather and they showed us the hybrid right. and the front ends were very different the mm-hmm. hybrid front end was a little sure. more like an avalon and more right. less in your face but the body sculpturing on both was mm-hmm. quite uh extreme they didn't look like appliances what did you right. think? Right. Their look? Well, I mean, looking at them, and in fact, they, they say that it's their most captivating midsize sedan. Um, you're almost looking at, at a, a Lexus. Lexus oh, very kind, definitely. Kind of you, you, know, you're, you're you, not, you have you're not, sort of that spindle Sure, look. you're not just buying a car because it's, it's safe and dependable. Now you're getting a lot more style than you necessarily would have gotten before. So th- they're aware of that. Um, it's an inch lower. The wheelbase is two inches longer. So there's a lot of tweaking to make it more appealing. And, and I think what's interesting for them and, and really for all of the car companies is that you have the, the customers are wanting the crossovers. So they can't abandon these sedans, but yet they, they have to be um, aware that, that the customers want, want a crossover. Um, so, you know, the sedans, they really have to step it up. And I think that, that they certainly did with, with this Camry. What do you think about the two-tone roof option? They had uh, they Ooh. showed one model yeah, where the black, very yeah. top of the roof is black, and mm-hmm. visually it really lowers the car. I mean, right. you step back and it makes it almost look like a right. sports sedan. It's yes. paint, though? Yeah. Uh, it's paint. Mm-hmm. And it has no, uh, no character line. It's just uh, paint. And you yeah. look at it and think, well, one wag said, you know, where's the Landau top? But <laughs> it was an interesting look. It is, yes. Interesting right. look. Like to see that. Right. Interesting look. Um, some of the other vehicles, let's see that. We got, we got another question. Yeah, we got another question. question. Uh, Charles wants oh, by the way, did I introduce you, Joe? Joe no, is our okay. uh, editor of videographer who's sort of producing our Facebook Live uh, for today, and he's handling the questions. I'm doing a great job. Uh, Joe wow, is, is one of our consummate people behind the scenes. Go ahead. Charles wants to know about the um, – the Chevrolet Equinox. Now, I know there was a new GMC Terrain, but they right. didn't say anything about the Equinox, even well, though the Equinox a new one is coming, right? They're, they're, the Equinox is already out, and the uh, Terrain is built on the same chassis, uh, 4 and 6, and it will also get um, the, a diesel. gets the same diesel as in the Cruze. But if you remember, and I'm sure they do, uh, the terrain looked very different from the Equinox. This terrain looks even more different from the Equinox, and it looks completely different on the interior. Same basic layout, but really they don't share anything much that's visual. Um, Nice-looking vehicle. uh, Looks richer than an Equinox. The big news at the show, of course, for Chevrolet was the new Traverse. And here's interesting. We've already had the GMC Acadia come out. And it got smaller to be more like pilot size. The rumor all along is that chassis was going to have two wheelbases, a long one and a short one. GM got GMC got the short one. Chevy gets the long one. Uh, they've actually added wheelbase, and the third row seat can now ha- – I can get in the third row seat of the Traverse and not feel completely cramped. It's not just for kids anymore. Uh, it looks tougher. They've raised the front end. It looks a little bit more Ford um, uh, Explorer on the front end. Uh, and uh, six and four cylinder power. Add, there. They added trims. Uh, they have an RS oh. and a uh, now the high, country, trim? High, high country, high country trim. Yeah, they so. got a high country trim. So Again, uh, nine Chevy auto. was Chevy and GMC. Uh, they were all about crossovers, and that was it. There was nothing from Buick. There was nothing from Cadillac. Yeah, Another the, question about the uh, the GMC. Something about a push button transmission. I saw one of the guys on Facebook wants to know: Did you see that in person? There was talk of a push button trans uh, instead you know, of I don't a. Even I was shift. actually at the there, reveal. I don't remember. There, there was a rotary transmission. The one, yeah. Okay. It's you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I remember reading. I didn't see it because there's a ton of people around it, and I was doing other stuff. But uh, yeah, I, 
They, that is a different uh, shifter. Uh, uh, another thing that the terrain, uh, I, I, the terrain looks way different than it did before. I yeah, honestly hated the way the old it does terrain it, yeah, was. Yeah, it's much more attractive. It is. It looks like uh, an Arc- Acadia. And they use that floating roof line that is now the oh, new. Oh, yes. That's new throughout the industry. I guess Nissan started it with the Murano, and now it just seems and, like everybody's and, using uh, it. Uh, Evoke Lexus. has used it. Yeah. Oh, yes. The rear uh, between the C and D pillars on the GMC terrain, it actually looks like it's just sheet metal mm-hmm. unless you get a, a light color so yeah that that's a very striking difference i, I, br- the, I brought uh, up some pictures of this terrain from that's got push button stuff although there it is uh he's correct on uh, below the hvac oh, wow. controls Woo-hoo. is a uh, large yeah. park button on the left a reverse looks like a little uh, thing you put your finger in a neutral a drive which like looks like a toggle and yes, indeed. There I'll pass is. on that. There I will is. say at least the park button is huge. There's yeah. some that make it small. I mean, that's a button that you really need. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> to make it big and obvious, that's a good. As much as I dislike that it's a button, if it's going to be a button, at least it's big. <laughs> Most I us, could get way off topic talking about a park button right now, but I won't. <laughs> I'll save it for another podcast. But I had an issue with one recently. Oh. Okay. okay. I want to hear that story. So another push button transmission. Punch it, as they used to say with the old Chryslers. Okay. What else? Um, oh, I'm trying to think of other. There big was. Ones from uh, the let's see. There. Concepts. The, the concept. There were actually several interesting concepts. How about the um, the uh, V Motion 2.0 at oh, Nissan? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, which, that was one of the more striking ones. Which was their attempt to say, "Hey, we think there's life in this in this Altima like sedan market." Sticking with the Nissan family, they had. I'm sorry. Yeah, they went to Infinity, the QX50, which should be pretty huge for them. And that's basically one of those one that toes the line of a concept slash production. Ready, yeah, it, it really was. Uh, they <laughs> Nissan also showed the uh, Rogue Sport, mm-hmm. which is the. Uh, Kashkai, uh, and, and the most of the rest of the world. So it's a shortened, ver- a shortened looking rogue, although mm-hmm. it's a basically a different vehicle. And I twelve guess inches it's, shorter. It's more along the lines when you say of um, of uh, um, what it's it's, it's, a, it's NX, Q, except small Q3 type um, deal. Subaru. I was going to say CX3. Q- is it that? It's not that small. Is it CX5? I'd size? say it's about CX3 size. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Now I'm, now I'm starting to doubt. I think it's closer to like a – I don't think it's as small as a QX – or sorry, a CX3. CX3, maybe not. I'd well, it's, you know, it's it. probably more close to – akin to the size of the original Rogue. But we – you can tell we obviously haven't sure. looked into all the details. Well, but, but I, I will say on that that on our website we had a picture of the Rogue – and that one, and when the rogue, the rogue sport next right, to each other, right? Yeah. Exactly, and you can see the, the difference. Yep. And you notice it mostly kind of in, in, in the back end is, is where, where they're losing. I thought the rogue sport was pretty good looking, but sure, yeah, and, it's and definitely smaller, right? And but you know they're they're gearing it toward urban uh, drivers and, so and young drivers. Size it it also small. may end up basically, you know, the jute is 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 kind of like all along in the tooth, and, mm-hmm. and this may they may true, get rid true, of the juke yeah. and keep this in its place. That that was one speculation. Yeah. Speak, it's bigger than speaking the juke. of Nissan. We have a question. Adam wants to know, and I think I know what the answer is going to be. But was there anything about the Z at the uh, no. auto show? No. no, not a word. Yeah, should be coming soon. No, you would think so, but I've yeah. been waiting for it for a while, and it's yeah, just they. Too. It's almost like they're going out of their way to ignore we'll it. We'll be on that Q sixty platform most likely with a new yeah. motor. Please, more uh, Motor Week uh, viewers, if you've got something you want to know about, because I'm starting to run low on my list here. Uh, <laughs> the Mercedes, they had a bunch like oh, usual. Sure. So uh, that was the Cross Trek. You know, Cross Trek. I thought the size of the uh, the uh, the <clears throat> Rogue, Rogue Sport, Sport was. A little larger than a cross track, but in okay, that so same not vein. Not terribly small. No, in that vein. Hmm. Uh, and Alfa Romeo didn't have anything new, but it was our first chance to see uh, their uh, new SUV, which I must say, that was uh, a, yeah, was, LA. It was spectacular. It's a good-looking vehicle Still for sure. Yeah. It yeah. is. Yeah. BMW 5 Series. How can we answer that? Big. With that? Yeah. I mean, that's huge, and it goes on sale like right away. Mm-hmm. Um, were, were, did you guys like it in person? Because when I was posting all this stuff on social media, I, I saw a lot of just like 
ho hum. Like, well, it doesn't okay, look any different. Yeah, it's, it's like very this... evolutionary. <laughs> it's a little sleeker. That's it's a little sleeker. A little, sleeker. A little more yes. going on underneath. You know, at the bottom in front of the it wheels in the front. Didn't so. look quite as hefty to me. Yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, but the big news for that is so not only is there going to be a plug-in hybrid version. But there's going to be, uh, for the first time, an M550i, mm-hmm. which right. is akin to the uh, M235i, oh, where it's right. not a full M car, but you still get a lot sure. of that M, sure. uh, a lot of those M attributes. They Joe's also showed waving a 760 crazy, uh, yeah. with the first, sir, first 7 series with the M On the uh, subject treatment. of BMW, we have – Emily wants to know, Does the will the Kia Stinger be able to compete with BMW, Audi – things in that well, field that depends on who you ask uh, kia no. will say is yes that's the whole purpose <laughs> yeah, of doing sure. the car but i think it's it'll come down to folks like at this what table is, and whoever else did they it. say what engine is going to be in that stinger <laughs> yeah they got a, yeah. i think a two liter turbo and a 3.3 v twin turbo v6 twin turbo v6 i think with the four cylinders 250 255 in the stinger and the six cylinders 365 and if, if you're comparing it against drive. the bmw the uh, m550i that's 456 horsepower. So Yeah, but this is just a launch. I think they have a chance here. Their suspension's been stepping up a lot lately in the game recently. And if they launch it with an available manual, I think, I think it'll have a, a lot of impact. And it'll be a cheap car with a manual that, has, it, that could be capable. Hmm. I think there's a market for that. I, it, I think there's a market for it. It's harder to find a manual. It's got to be better than it. they had with the – I mean, I know it's Hyundai, but better <clears> than the Genesis is Coupe's manual. But that thing was terrible. When you look at what Kia is doing, and they've stayed the course despite the fact that they've not always had successes with sales, they really have stepped up their game, and they've become the performance division of the Hyundai Kia operation. So I wouldn't count them out. I think it. I thought it was. I'll tell you one thing. As far as journalistic crowds, it it had one of the biggest crowds around it the entire time the show well, was cool. open. Yeah. That you could not get close to that car. It had Brembo's on it, one I saw. Yes, it did. Yeah. It had Brembo's Pretty on it. Pretty impressive. My, my question on this is just me personally. Yes, Joe. Put How, it through Facebook Live first. Yeah. <laughs> How <laughs> is it that Kia can afford to go make a rear-wheel drive sports sedan when, like, you know, Ford and, and Buick and GM and Chrysler and stuff, like, they just all, like, sit there and bellyache that, oh, nobody will buy it. We can't afford to develop one. And that's why, you know... Lincoln My guess is, is part of that chassis towards. is probably a, there's some Genesis in it somewhere. Mm-hmm. That's, they're probably spreading it over between Genesis and, and them, and they'll find other uses for it. And it might be a H-Track, or not H-Track, what's the key alter? It might be an all-wheel drive maybe at some point, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, very possibly. Which would be cool. Well, I, um, if we don't have any other questions, we're just looking through here again. Some, well, something very small. Yeah, uh, go ahead. The first Chinese brand. Oh, uh, GAC. Oh, yeah. Yeah. GAC, and I'm not going to try this. and pronounce uh, what the uh, G stands for right. because I can't. <laughs> Uh, City in China. Maybe. They made news because not because they're at the Detroit, at the Detroit show saying they're coming to America, but because they said they're going to open an engineering center in Michigan, as a which is usually a precursor of launching a vehicle. Mm. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What did you think of their products? They were kind of you know they were okay. Yeah, they were okay. I wouldn't say they were showstoppers, but uh, it's always good to have somebody new there, and it was cool to go by the yeah. booth and see some people you'd never met before. And I mean. We didn't, they just they look they, they look they like look average viable. cars. Yeah, they look they like, look like average cars. They did have right. an all electric model, a, right. a GE3. I wonder yeah. if GE knows they're using their name. Right. The, we didn't talk about Mercedes. Uh, Mercedes did two events. They did one the night before where they showed their freshened uh, GLA lineup, uh, a 250, and also the AMG 45. They look good. It's Small cars are now a huge part of Mercedes sales worldwide, not just in this country. And then they had a very good-looking uh, E-Class coupe that they showed at the show. Uh, I thought it was quite beautiful. And they had uh, celebrating uh, AMG's 50th anniversary. They had two updates to the GT, uh, a C coupe and uh, a, an S uh, coupe. Yeah, fairly minor. They'd already, but... sh- they'd already shown the uh, the C convertible, so. But they drew quite a bit of attention. The GLAs were, you know, that, that's where they're putting their future money on. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Whew. Any more questions? One, one last one. Joe? Somebody Shoot. wants to know, what is the first car we're going to see on Motor Week for a road test that was at Detroit? 
Which I know that's kind of a hard question. Five but. series. Five uh, series. Uh, probably the five series, yeah. and after that, it'll probably be the Odyssey, I'd be, be willing to bet. But, um, yeah, because of when it's going to hit the market, five series definitely, I think, because it's going to be out so soon. Okay, let's move on to a couple little things. Um, the um, North American Car, Truck, and now Sport Utility Vehicles of the Year. Um, I'm a member of the jury. I'm, I must say that I was not surprised that Car of the Year went to the Chevrolet Bolt EV, you know, first reasonably affordable electric car with a over 200-mile range. Um, I sort of also figured that even though in this f- new category of sport utility vehicle, even though it's not an SUV as we call it or even a crossover, I thought since they put the Chrysler Pacifica in there and it's the first remake of the original American minivan in a long time, I thought it would win, and it did. I think if there was any surprise, it was pickup trucks. Um, the contestants were Honda Ridgeline, which won, uh, Ford F-250 Super Duty, and also the um, uh, – Nissan Titan now that they have their full lineup out. And the order of finishing, by the way, was uh, Ridgeline, which won by a handsome margin over the uh, Super Duty, and they beat out Titan. I think a lot of people were surprised, but you have to remember that most of the journalists are car-oriented more than uh, heavy truck. Uh, last, when the first Ridgeline came out, it got an awful lot of praise from the automotive press. Uh, this new one looks more like a regular truck, but it has a lot of features that most personal use buyers will use. So I think, uh, you know, it's it's a reasonable award, and I think Honda was very, very happy and gratified. So we'll see see how it sells. The last thing, and this broke today uh, before we actually started doing our pod and uh, cast, but we should talk about it, is Fiat Chrysler America, and there was a rumor about this going around the show a couple days ago has now been charged by the EPA that they basically are violating emissions rules and have done it knowingly on their um, three liter turbo uh, diesel that's going into the Grand Cherokee and the Ram. So far, we're only talking about about 100,000 vehicles. This is nothing like Volkswagen. Uh, Also, it remains to be seen whether this was poor programming or they had uh, illegal defeat devices. It's interesting to note that the only reason this stuff is coming to the surface is because now all diesels are getting road testing, where before all the manufacturers had to meet laboratory tests. And as we all know, Volkswagen rigged their vehicles to pass in the laboratory, but they didn't pass on the road. Now every diesel vehicle is getting uh, extensive road testing for certification, and that's where this showed up. Uh, there's a lot of name-calling going back and forth. Uh, Chrysler's head, Marcioni, is uh, basically saying he's going to fight it tooth and nail. So we'll see where this goes. But this is nothing like the magnitude that Volkswagen went through. And by the way, these engines do have uh, urea injection, so they've got uh, modern pollution systems on them. Uh, probably won't be the last that we hear of someone being charged. But I don't know. With a new administration, who knows? Anybody got any comments? You saw the headlines. I, I don't know. Is I mean, it another, I'm, is it another I, peg I, in the coffin I'm for actually, diesels? I'm or? surprised it actually took this long to find somebody else. Yeah, I kind of thought it would be yeah, like once the Volkswagen thing broke, I figured it would all be just like you're going to get, yeah, well, get caught doing it. Actually, that's interesting you say that because there have been similar charges in Europe against, I believe, a couple of Mercedes engines and some other brands, uh, yeah. and they sort of just drifted that's away. That's what I thought. We, we I remember the Blue Tech stuff, but yeah. I thought that just yeah. kind of went away. Yeah. So. Yeah. so. <laughs> Maybe uh, maybe there's fire here. Maybe it's just so. I mean, it's obviously. I know it's a, a hundred thousand vehicles. I mean, that's just all they've sold in the last what two three years. Yeah, right? I think it's, it's four, not like it's on select. It's fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Yeah, so. but I actually thought they had sold more than that. But it's got to be all of them. Um, they also haven't said the Volkswagens were spewing forty times the legal limit mm-hmm. in nitrous oxide. They have not put a number on this, so we don't know. Uh, how badly they are polluting, but clearly, um, you know, it's it's like when is this? You wonder if diesels will ever, you know, have much more than a toehold. One step now. forward, Probably two not. steps back, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I think that brings us to an end to mm. our Motor Week podcast number one fifty four <clears> and <throat> our Motor Week Facebook Live. 
uh, production. Number one, thank I want to thank uh, Joe Ligo, our videographer and editor, uh, who's uh, produced it today. Our audio engineer that always makes us sound terrific is Jim Bigwood. Our podcast creator, Bob Mixer. Our podcast creator, Patrick Lucas, all of us around the table. We want to thank you for listening and watching not only our Motor Week podcast, but also uh, our show every week on public television stations everywhere and also on V4 Velocity. Till next time, for all of us at Motor Week, I'm John Davis. Don't pollute, drive safe, Don't drive and we'll see you next time. You have been listening to the podcast of Motor Week, television's original automotive magazine. MotorWeek is made possible by TireRack.com and by RockAuto.com. For additional information on podcasts, videos, and showtimes, visit our website at MotorWeek.org. And watch MotorWeek, television's longest-running automotive magazine series, each week on your local PBS station.